come and speak to all of you on this burning issue of land acquisition bill that is in, uh, has been in the news for the last few months. Friends, it's a uh, pleasure for me to come to IAC, especially to the uh, programs organized by the Hansa, because I find that in science campuses, campuses teaching science or research institutes with um, where people with science backgrounds are there, the interest in such issues is often very limited. And I find and this, I have come here more than four or five times to speak, usually on uh, issues uh, related to the agrarian sector. And I have each time found that there is a lively audience, which after the whatever little I speak, there is also a very lively interaction. And some of them, whom I have, uh, during the course of these uh, small uh, interactions, they later also continue to keep in touch. Some do mail at times on some issues. So I really find it nice to come and speak to this gathering. Thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. What is this so much of interest or so much of hue and cry about the land acquisition ordinance and the present 2015 land acquisition uh, bill? Why is there so much human crack? That is something to be understood. We all know that land has been acquired by the Indian government or, uh, or the whichever administration was here, even from the days of the British uh, the colonial rule here, uh, uh, on the basis of the 1894 Land Acquisition Act. This Land Acquisition Act has been in uh, has uh, continued till very recently to be implemented and whatever land was acquired in India especially by the government was under the on the basis of this 1894 Land Acquisition Act. But over a decade ago there were a lot of demands that there should be a repeal of this Land Acquisition Act of 1894 and there should be a, an act which would keep in mind the interest of the landholders, the agriculture workers and the other dependents on land. And there, were also, there is also a particular context in which this kind of a demand had come. There was large scale land acquisition going on in different parts of the country. They were, there were also protests and at times there have been violent kind of uh, repression in some cases and this was the context in which this particular discussion came. And around 2007, there were two acts which the government proposed. That is, when the UPA 1 was there, there were two uh, acts which were initially proposed. One was the Land Acquisition Act, uh, Land Acquisition Bill, since it was not yet passed, and there was a rehabilitation and resettlement bill. Organizations like ours felt these cannot be separate, they should be uh, 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 together, and they uh, uh, should be part and parcel of one comprehensive legislation. So then, based on discussions in the Parliamentary Standing Committee and all that, the, uh, the land acquisition uh, bill as well as the rehabilitation and resettlement bill were brought together into what was known as land acquisition, rehabilitation and resettlement bill. It is another matter that later in the UPA 2, when this land acquisition, rehabilitation and resettlement bill was brought, it was given a more, uh, uh, more catchy or uh, kind of name right to uh, fair uh, land acquisition and uh, of this kind, how rehabilitation and resettlement would be fair and just, that is what they wanted to continue. When this land acquisition act was being, uh, bill was being discussed, the All India Kisan Sabha, we did meet the standing committee. 
and there were seven countries at that time. Initially, it was Ram Gopal Yadav was in charge of the standing committee on the rural development, followed by uh, we had Kalyan Singh and Sumitra Mahajan, both BJP leaders who headed the parliamentary standing committee. So it was an inclusive project in the, in the sense that it tried to collect the information, collect the opinions of wide sections of the society on what should be the nature of this land acquisition and rehabilitation resettlement legislation that is going to come. So, despite there, uh, there being some differences that organizations like ours had, there were also some progressive considerations which were retained in the bill that was placed during the UPA 2. Significant being that whenever land is being acquired, the consent of the landholder should be taken into account. Secondly, there was also there, there was a provision that how for government for public purpose, if you are taking then around seventy percent, and for if it is for a private or, or public private partnership, then you should have eighty percent consent to be taken, and so on. Then there was the important principle of the social impact assessment that was also included in this and along with that there was also some safeguards to ensure that the food security of the country is not uh, hampered in an uh, adverse manner. So these uh, provisions mainly were there and there were also provisions for compensating the land losers there were different suggestions mentioned in this uh, legislation. But what we found, for instance in the rehabilitation and resettlement, there were a lot of provisions, about 25 things uh, listed, like you should have a primary health center nearby, there should be roads, there should be portable water in all uh, resettlement areas and these kind of things. But in the end, you had one line saying, if any or all of these cannot be given to the people who have lost land, then the reason should be mentioned. Implying that, you did not give anything at all. So it was a continuous struggle that we had to have. Till the last minute, when the bill was brought into the parliament. And since I had been involved at every stage in the interaction with the government and in bringing the amendments that we wanted, the government came up with 156 amendments to the original bill which was uh, discussed by the Parliamentary Standing Committee and agreed upon. And how did it come? These 156 amendments, like we were, in the, we were supposed to receive it today evening, we went to Jaira Pramesh and he said you will get it by 9 o'clock. Then you find that at 9 they say you will get it by 12, then 3 in the morning. Finally we got the 156 amendments at 9 in the morning and they told us by 11 our amendments should be there. So there was some element of uh, uh, some urgency that they had and they didn't want a proper discussion, that kind of a, uh, impression the government did come. We instead of moving amendments to it, we just wrote a letter to the then speaker, Mira Kumar, telling that this is a deliberate attempt to subvert the established parliamentary norms because it has not been circulated to all members of parliament and uh, on such an important issue, um, you cannot just hurry. What happened then is that the speaker intervened and so it would not be place that day. The government had to withdraw. The government went ahead with one more session of meeting all political leaders, different parties. And then they came up with their uh, bill in the parliament. It was passed with only around 23 people from the left who voted against the bill. And there, all the, uh, those from the left moved amendments to many of the provisions, provisions in the bill. But they were defeated because left doesn't have a big support in the parliament. Nevertheless, even the 
organizations like the Nissan Squad Police that given the 1894 Act, the 2013 Act was a far, uh, was a step ahead in the right direction. Though it had its own problems, they had, there were some progressive uh, elements too. This government, the BJP government, which has taken over around a year ago, when the BJP was in the opposition, I mentioned before you that it was Sumitra Mahajan and Kalyan Singh who were the chairpersons of the standing committee. They claimed at that time, if you listen, if you can listen to the speeches of Sushma Swaraj or Arun Jaiti, at that time, they claimed that this was actually their baby. This Land Acquisition Act of 2013 was actually theirs and there was a lot of bonhomie between the Congress and the BJP and the Congress also agreed to accommodate some of the demands of the BJP like for instance, there was a provision in their, in their draft that whenever land is acquired, especially for irrigation projects, then they, uh, the people who lose land would be given land in return. But that would mean directly in Gujarat as, uh, and this Narmada region, they, they would have to be compensated not just in terms uh, in money terms but also land for land. So in, when it, uh, though it was passed in the Rajya Sabha, in the Lok Sabha, when it came to the Rajya Sabha, the government came up with this amendment and it was actually something agreed upon by both BJP and the Congress and many other parties. Now, this government after coming up, one of the first things it did is to totally revert its position. It's a reversal, it is a new term means. And they said, no question of consent, no question of social impact assessment, for under section 10A about five major for infrastructure for they have also added one that for housing for the poor and such things. No need of social impact assessment, no need of seeking the consent of the people. And along with that, even there is no need for this food security concern to be kept. We, there was also a clause that if land is acquired and not being utilized after a particular period that will be reverted back to the landowners. And uh, landowners, are, they had also brought about a land bank uh, concept. We were opposed to that. We were of the opinion that it should go back to the land owner itself or it should be used for some kind of a uh, land redistribution to the land. This was our opinion. So these uh, government first came with an amendment with an ordinance on December um, in, towards the last of the, uh, December in which these aspects were withdrawn. There is no need for uh, returning back the land within that particular period and also that uh, the jurisdiction of courts there was some issue that the last act also had the ju jurisdiction of the court that it can only be challenged in the high court it cannot be challenged at the lower level. These kind of issues where the poor uh, farmer or the agriculture worker cannot access this uh, recourse to uh, judiciary. So we had objected to that also. And the then government had made some changes. But now even here, empowering the collector in a big way. And even officials, if they are uh, having some lapses on their part, not holding them responsible, that they cannot, they, there cannot be any punishment for these officials. These kind of things were incorporated. But within six months, they made a lot of effort. They tried uh, meeting different political parties and uh, came up with it in the Lok Sabha. But in the Rajya Sabha, they were not able to push through because they don't have the numbers there. Then the land ordinance lapsed. The ordinance was reissued. When it was reissued, it was reissued with some more changes. Rather, while all of us were demanding that the act should be strengthened, what happened is they also added one more thing saying that 
on both sides of the expressway, one kilometer can be taken over. Um, in the, um, that was also allowed. So one kilometer on both sides of the expressway. Then basically, it was very clear that it is promoting corporate um, land grab as well as real estate speculation. That is what was happening. So one is the struggle within the parliament that did take place. But when this first ordinance was brought itself, we as an organization of the peasantry, we feel that this is not a struggle just which can be fought and won only by the Kisan Sama. We feel that the broadest unity should be built on this particular issue. We tried to build a unity and we brought around, around 300 organizations of the peasantry, of the agriculture workers, Dalit groups, Adivasi organizations and also many of the civil society organizations like the National Alliance for People's Movement which includes Narmada Bacha Vahantolas and such groups. And this ordinance was immediately met with the burning of the ordinance across the country in more than 300 districts on January 30th. And then when the second ordinance also we did have, but before that on uh, February 24th, we had a massive protest in uh, New Delhi at the parliament seat. This had also activists like the anti-corruption crusader Anna Hazare coming and joining on a platform of the Kisan Sabha and this broad platform which now we have called as the Pu Adhikar An. Interestingly, from just a, a movement to oppose the land acquisition ordinance, it has now turned into a movement for land rights. Right. Land rights. So, uh, and uh, we have also come up with some, uh, for instance, when there was a campaign for uh, about ghar vapsi, we said it's not, we don't want ghar vapsi, we want zameen vapsi. Zameen vapsi where land has been taken over, but nothing is happening on that land. We have been demanding that it should be given back to the landowners and the landers. In some areas, there are efforts to also occupy them. That is the next phase of struggle which we all can visit. Due to this mass mobilization that we have done, not just in the, in the capital city, but we have also had across the country this time. Even Bangalore we had, in Karnataka we had a Padayatra of more than 1000 kilometers in the state and culminating in over 50,000 people uh, at the Freedom Park, which had 12 different organizations coming together here. So similarly, state after state, district in, in districts, we have had this kind of protests and padayatras, and also a signature campaign where about five crore signatures we are um, planning to collect. It is uh, on uh, the process is on. So th all these uh, activities together as culminated in the government going on the back and coming with a uh, joint group of the parliament to look into this uh, land acquisition, rehabilitation, uh, resettlement, legislation. But again the parliamentary group is in a big way, it is, it's a lopsided presence of the BJP having much greater number from uh, Congress from the Rajya Sabha, there are a few people even from Lok Sabha, but from the left there is only one single member in this particular committee. So this committee is likely to push through the major uh, positions that the government stands for. Especially the Prime Minister himself is very keen to push through the land acquisition ordinance. We are not expecting much uh, reversal of their earlier stance in the committee. So there is need for greater struggle force. So this is the entire the situation that the present land acquisition uh, legislation is in. What is it that, why is this kind of an unprecedented opposition to this land acquisition legislation? That is also interesting to know. Because I, I have been working at the Vidansama Center for the last six years. No issue 
has managed to galvanize the rural population in the manner in which this land and uh, ordinance has been. We have arrived, we have traveled many times to the districts, to the uh, villages, we have tried to mobilize on various other issues, primarily against the neoliberal economic uh, policies, the entire gamut of neoliberal economic policies. But the, but the kind of response we have got in this case, that has never happened. It is also this uh, over time with the last two decades of neoliberal policies being implemented. There is a deliberate policy of operating the peasantry and dispossessing the, uh, the peasantry of the land which is their sole source of livelihood security as well as food uh, uh, security of their families and the country. So this process is on. And certain other factors also. There has been an uh, unprecedented unseasonal rains as well as in hail storms which has hit more than two crore hectares across the country. The government's insensitive handling of this natural calamity that also has led to a rising discontent among the rural masses. And uh, they are seeing how the government is more keen to promote corporate profiteering and they are not interested in actually addressing the issues that the rural poor as well as the peasantry are raising. So probably because of all this and probably because different groups, you see we have also had, uh, when we have brought together 300 groups on this issue, on a, uh, to build the issue based unity. These 300 groups are not all homogeneous entities with similar kind of ideas. There are different. But processes which went into evolving our own positions on the first land acquisition rehabilitation resettlement bill, which was brought by the Congress led UPA, and the kind of convergence of our positions, that also had a role in being able to build this kind of thing. So the BJP government is going to pursue. The opposition also comes, we have seen, there have been different spots of resistance to this kind of indiscriminate position. In everywhere, even in a telephone state like Bengal, at one time there has been some issues related to the land acquisition and the kind of uh, um, conflict between the state and the land holders or the dependents on land. The left has accepted that this is a, there were some mistakes and they have evolved, their, their position has evolved over time. And, and that was most visible during the uh, land acquisition bill which was brought with the UPA government, the kind of position that emerged during that time. And that position, we managed to rally around the other groups around that position. That is why uh, probably we could build such a unprecedented unity against this draconian land position of this. Some of the other reasons why we are um, opposing or the peasantry is opposing is also to be noted. Even if you talk about the 1894 Land Acquisition Act, we say it is draconian, it is colonial by British uh, administration it was brought in. But this Land Acquisition Act when it was being discussed, even the British people involved with the preparation of the legislation, they were also very clear that though they are the colonial masters that time, they were clear that how things should be worked. They were not in favor of the eminent, eminent domain of the state, meaning that even for private purpose, you can take land without consent of the people. They were very clear that for the government purpose, they were taken. But if you see the debates which went into uh, during the, uh, the time the Land Acquisition Act was uh, brought about by the British, they are very clear that for private purposes the state cannot use this uh, eminent domain. But now, in effect, what has happened under the Modi government is the Modi government is telling even for in the name of infrastructure, in the name of public-private partnerships, 
many things which they have broadly defined public uh, public purpose to in include almost everything under the sun under public purpose and for all these there would be no requirement of seeking consent or having a social impact and now they say that while one eight, uh, one kilometer on both sides of expressway they have allowed to be taken under this uh, land ordinance they are now saying that we have given a job to the one member of every family of agriculture so what what is the job firstly no one defines what is this job when we uh, during the discussion on the earlier bill we were very clear that whatever job is given should be given to all employable adults of the affected family we were very clear and we also put one more thing in it that the wages of such a job would not be less than three times the minimum wages of the agriculture workers in that particular state. and it should be indexed to the inflation because there should be some check on what is the kind of but this government has is now claiming that one job per agriculture worker family there are let us say five members in the family five employable and one getting a job and even that what is the kind of job is not explained so how would the family sustain that is a uh, issue here and in the earlier uh, act also some things because of our intervention we could get even tenant farmers could benefit something the agriculture workers the artisans they, their concerns also were uh, in some way they tried to bring it to the earlier stage but by removing the social impact assessment the and that entire uh, possibility also is destroyed so these are some of the uh, problems with the uh, present bill and food security concerns food security concerns even the earlier bill we were not happy they said multi crop land to to the acquiring of multi crop land there was some uh, some constraints which they brought in that legislation we said it should not be just multi crop land because even if you see large parts of india it is dry land agriculture and may not be in many parts it's not multi crop also uh, they meant irrigated multi crop only so we said we should look into all productive lands and the prior informed concept should be kept in we also brought in one more clause especially in the uh, case of the infrastructure projects and express base that the land which is acquired should be only that much which is actually required there should be a uh, proper assessment about what is the land required and only that much which is actually required should be legal there is a principle uh, which is uh, uh, which we quoted in that that this the land which is actually required alone will be legal. this is because of our experience that the kind of land acquisition which has been happening you might have seen the uh, uh, known about the patta parso protests against the land acquisition in up it was the uh, jp's uh, yamuna express way and all so there the kind of land that has been acquired that time it was almost 3 kilometers had been acquired on both sides that is not according to any of these acts it is based on the 1894 itself almost 3 kilometers of land on both sides have been acquired for real estate purposes formula 1 racing tracks golf courses and so on and when the farmers were given something like 400 rupees a square meter and the uh, the land prices escalated with all these coming up and very immediately after buying it at such a cheap rate um it was it increased to more than 100 times when when it was sold to the other uh, people who wanted to um, buy land for some other building purposes so the farmers are seeing this and uh, then the earlier act also mentioned about some added how farmers would get some benefit from it uh, whatever industry comes whatever development ha happens a share in the development these kind of things seem to be 
further diluted by this particular land acquisition ordinance. I think I will stop here and speak more when you, uh, there is a discussion. I have some more issues which I would like to place before you. In the course of the discussion, I will keep those uh, for the discussion. Thank you.